I will sit there. There won't be three, there's only going to be one. I am going to be like the Most High. Could God have destroyed Satan there and then? Yes or no? Does God, some people think that God does not have the power to destroy Satan. But remember, right through all this time, Satan is traveling around the universe. And as his pride is exalting, and as he's developing a plan to develop, to establish his own throne, what is he doing as he goes to the universe and talks to them about God? He comes to a universe, to, 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 a, to a created world. They all come around, all the little kids, you know, say, oh, sign here, please sign here, Lucifer. Lucifer is the hero, they love him. You know, in verse 12 of Isaiah chapter 14, we read this. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down, you who wicked, then who weak, weak, who weakened the nations. You know that, that word weakened means that they created nations that were around the universe. Love Lucifer. He had a soft spot in their heart. Until that moment, not one lie had been told. There had never been a deception. The, the rule of the universe was the, 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 the rule of love. Everyone trusted everyone. They didn't know what evil was. And suddenly Lucifer begins to tell people, oh, God is not the God you really think he is. I live in his presence. And I have seen things about God that no one of you have ever seen. What do you think that cost in the mind of the created universe? You know, friends, the confusion became so thick about whether God was right or whether Lucifer was right that the Bible tells us that a third of the angels of heaven took side with Lucifer. And there are trillions of angels in heaven. Millions and millions of angels created by God believed and they were deceived by Lucifer because this angel had the ability, the wisdom to turn truth and twist it and deceive minds. And perfect minds were deceived by him. The confusion was so thick. The confusion was so rampant. The discontentment became so rampant that if God had destroyed Lucifer there and then, the problem of sin would have become worse than had been fixed. God in his marvelous wisdom realized and knew that there was only one way for this rebellion to be quenched and evil to be destroyed. Only one way. And it was to allow Lucifer to develop his kingdom, to develop his power, to show his true colors. At the beginning, no one knew what this thing about sin was all about. They didn't know evil. They were confused about the character of God. And so God stands aside and says, Lucifer, I'll give you time. So that at the end of this time, his universe will judge and they would choose who will reign over them. Lucifer was not content. And if we come to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, you will find that Lucifer tried to take the throne by force. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 17, you will find that Lucifer tried to take the throne by force. He counted his luck. He said, I've got a third of angels on my side, and I know that God, because he's a God of love, he will not defend himself. I can take the throne. I know that God is not a God of violence. I know that he will not defend himself. And so he marched his armies against the throne of God. Revelation chapter 12, verses, verses 7 through to 8. Read the following. And war broke out in heaven. What did break out in heaven, friends? What? We usually heaven, 
we usually imagine heaven to be a place of what? Peace and joy and bliss. No, friends, not here. According to the Bible, there was a time when Satan marched his armies against heaven, against God, and if he could, he would have destroyed God himself. It says here, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer, friends. God the Father stood aside. He would not defend his throne because his principle is love. He does not war. He does not conflict. If, if he has to fight, he will not fight, friends. He'd rather be destroyed than take a fight. But you know what he does? Who defended the throne? Michael. You know what the name Michael means? The only one who is like God. And according to the scriptures, friends, Michael is the great hero of the, of the universe. Michael is the superhero that we have. And we know him today by the name Jesus. The Father stood aside and it was the second person of the Godhead who rallied the armies of God, the faithful angels, and they stood against the armies of Satan that they were coming against the throne of God. It mustn't have taken very long for Jesus to cast Satan out of heaven. Can you see in that text how it says that in heaven there was no more place for him? No more place. He was cast out. Jesus defeated Satan in heaven for first time. And he was thrown out. I don't know what it was like to be out of heaven, being unable to enter into it anymore. Could you imagine those angels that had joined the rebellion? Suddenly they find themselves and they cannot, they just cannot. God has given them I don't know how long Time to repent, and they have not repented. Now they've been thrown out of heaven. Jesus, friends, defeated Satan in heaven. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9, we read the following account. Chapter 12 and verse 9. We read, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with him. He was cast out, friends, and notice now the titles that the Bible gives to this angel who was one day Lucifer, the light bearer. He becomes the dragon, the serpent, Satan, and the devil. Those four names describe who he is. The dragon speaks of him being the arch rebel, the enemy of God who wars against the kingdom of God. He hates God with a passion and he hates everyone and everything that has to do with God. The name serpent describes him as being an incredibly wise and cunning being who has an amazing ability to deceive. The name devil means the one who accuses falsely, the liar, the slanderer. He delights in, create, in doing this, in, in, in lying, in deception, in twisting truth to make it appear as a, a, a lie and in taking lies and making them appear as truth. It is him who has invented the theory that there is no God. It is him who has invented the theory that there is no devil, friends. Because as long as ignorance in regards to his existence reigns, he knows that people will not be aware of what he's doing. True? And the name Satan, the name Satan means, oh, it's just escaped my mind. You know, you get very, very excited about uh, something, and suddenly what you want to say next is gone. The one who opposes. Satan means the adversary, the one who opposes. You know, friends, you are coming to these programs, and I guarantee that you face so many challenges to come. We have invited thousands of people Yet a handful have come. Why? Because Satan has opposed them coming to the programs. He knows.